convergence, where you buy far more technology and solution base from one place rather than lots of different places. Because you just don't have the time or the money to do the integration yourself. The trick, of course, is to avoid being locked in to only one vendor. That's a really bad idea. But how you getting that balance right is one of the challenges of today. But those are some of the things that we're wrestling with inside our organization. In HP, we call this new style of IT. This is both a revolution, as in it's going to happen very quickly. In fact, it arguably has already started to happen, but also has to be an evolution. Our industry is famous for telling people everything will be wonderful, all you have to do is throw everything you've got away and start again. Um, we, no, no, unacceptable answer. We have to evolve from where we were, the world of client-server, the world of a, a distributed PC, the world of fairly proprietary software, to a new generation of technology that can cope with some of the demands I've sketched out for you today. That's what we call the new style of IT. And I'd love to welcome up on stage Ian Oberly talk about how did some of that really works in the organization. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, David. Um, it's fascinating when I listen to David and he says he's been around for 30 years and, and as he was leaving to come up to the stage, he said, so what mainframe were you working on? And actually, 20 years ago, I can't really remember, to be honest, because I was the person that was stuck in the corner and the mainframe was in the data center that I wasn't actually allowed to go into. Um, the other fascinating thing is, on the table, there's this. This is a pencil, I thought. We're talking about IT today, we're talking about the future of everything, and yet on the table we have a pencil. How pioneering is that? Until you see that it's been sort of regenerated from a CD case. And I remember vinyl and the transition from vinyl to, to CDs. And, and that seemed like a fairly big thing at the time. Um, just a very boring slide. Very boring slide until I came into this room and I thought about the history of our company. OCSL is about 23 years old, and I thought about the people that were painting around this room. It took them about 23 years, and how life changed for them in 23 years was probably not quite so significant. In 23 years in our business, everything has changed. And we're talking to you today about the change that we're seeing, which is now not a yearly change, but more a monthly change. And some of the things that David was talking about, and, and he didn't mention cloud, which I'm, fan, was a fantastic thing to get through a, a pitch with HP for 15 minutes and not mention cloud is, is a great thing. But cloud is one of the four tenants that uh, HP are projecting to their customers at the moment as being things that you need to understand. We touched on data, David touched on data. Data is everywhere for us at the moment. But cloud is one of those facilitating technologies that may be something that actually helps us. It's here now, and there are people that are consuming it and using it. And Rob Easton will talk this afternoon a little bit about what Google are doing. Um, and I, it's interesting, are Google the new face of IT? Actually, Google are probably, they're the old boys these days. There are new companies coming on. We look at Google and we think, gosh, they're pioneering, they're exciting, etc. But the reality is, they're probably not that different to HP. And I don't mean that in a slight, because HP, if you look at them, have been around for a very, very long time and are seen as the old boys on the block. Google were very much perceived to be the new people. And cloud is one of those technologies that um, we are sometimes slightly scared of. Now, Dave mentioned the fact that um, we're running out of power. And um, this is a real conundrum. If we continue to grow at the rate that the analysts are predicting, and we're spending the next two days with the analysts, then we do run out of power very, very quickly. And it's a frightening thought. My son that's 11 years old just consumes stuff like it's, you know, an iPad. No, an iPad, I don't want an iPad, Dad. I want a phone, or I want something that I can just get onto Snapchat. I want to be able to use these things. They don't even think about how we grew up, and there were none of these things. And if we continue to grow at the rate that we are, we will run out of power. One of the encouraging things for me, um, two years ago when I went to one of HP's large events, is they launched uh, a new generation of server. Now, looking around the room, we're all old enough to remember when servers at least were probably that big and you could wheel them into a data center um, or, or bigger. Um, 
This is probably more powerful than those servers put together. This is a blade, if you want to call it that. It's a moonshot cartridge, in fact. And this is a PC. This is a PC on a chip, okay? It's got a hard disk, it's got the memory. I can get a huge number of these in one chassis. The beauty of this device and devices like this is actually what it's doing around energy consumption. Okay, it's saving, 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 saving space, it's saving energy consumption, it's saving air conditioning. This for the moment looks really exciting and is the future and I thought, oh, this is really, really good. Until you actually go to HP and you talk to them about what they're doing with this, not now, but in 2017 and 2020. This is the foundations for what HP sees the future in their technology. And it's just a piece of tin, and I'm quite happy to pass it around if people want to look at it. This is just a chip circuit board. There's nothing particularly exciting about this with regards to, it's the same that we do now, just a bit smaller. Okay, and Dave's gonna to talk to you in a minute about the machine. But this stuff runs out. Copper runs out, the bandwidth on copper runs out, okay? The amount of storage that we can get runs out because these things have not reinvented themselves for at least 20 years, okay? So we talk about the rate of change and in our industry, technology is gonna change beyond all recognition uh, down to the things like this. This looks great, but the reality is this has only got a time to live of a number of years. Okay, so if this has got a time to live of a number of years, which sounds like a quite a long time to me, what's next? Okay, now cloud is an answer to what's next. And what I mean from that is I don't want you to think about the concept of the, the stuff that runs cloud, more about it's a change in the way that we consume things. So pretty much at the moment, the cloud industry has been around for about 10 years, if we think about it. And we've been able to consume services from the likes of Rackspace and Amazon and those types of organisation for a number of years, and we have been doing it. However, bringing that into your enterprise always is a slightly cautious thing. Where is my data? You know, there, is, there are a section of uh, customers in the UK called the public sector that want to know where their data are, where their data is. Um, and for those customers, they like to be able to go and point at it sometimes. The minute that you abstract that into a cloud environment, that becomes very challenging. But this is something that can make a big, big change. But you'll notice that I put cloud version one. Okay, we're, we're into this journey and already this is reinventing itself. And, and technology that HP are potentially developing over the coming years will really redefine how cloud is. So back to the moonshot thing with regards to what HP are looking to do and how they're gonna change the way that we store data, how we move data along light cables, okay? And how we access applications on, on chipsets will redefine the way that cloud is perceived. So cloud now is really just the foundations and I, I talk to a lot of customers and they're still nervous about moving to the cloud. Who has a cloud strategy in the room? I'd be interested to have a show of hands. Who actually has a cloud strategy at the moment? Two or three people, okay, out of a room of 40, okay? If you do not have a cloud strategy now, you need to go back and think about, is it important to us? Can I exist without a cloud strategy? Not for the next 12 months, but for the next 36. What happens after the next 36 months? Because if you don't have a strategy to move to the cloud in some way, shape or form, and I don't mean everything, then you could be found that you don't have the business advantage. And one of the things that uh, the speakers are talking about is what's the impact? Who cares? Who really cares, okay, of all this stuff? Well, the, the digital native, is coming into our enterprises and they've got little influence at the moment. The, I think David said about 29 years old is the, the oldest digital native. And what we mean by that is somebody that was born into the internet. My son is a true digital native. He, he doesn't use the telephone for a telephone. He has an iPhone just so he can use Snapchat. Not so he can use the phone. He doesn't make a phone call on this thing. Okay, he uses apps and that is his life. Okay. 
It's really, really important to think about what we're doing with the cloud. Now, one thing that HP are doing is making a bet on a hybrid environment. So this, think of, what I'd like to think of is this is a stepping stone. This is a way of getting into the cloud, okay? This is not a sales pitch. This is HP have said, and they came out about six weeks ago and said, we believe, okay, that the cloud is going to be powered by the Helium network. It's a rebranding of their environment, but it's a way of putting everything into one environment. So if you want to consume the cloud in a private environment with a box that looks a bit like this, great. If you want to use this box as an aggregator to the public cloud, then great, that's fantastic. If you want to stretch between the two of those clouds, then this type of technology will facilitate that now. Now, it's a brave step. It's a brave step because they, they kind of bet on open source, first and foremost, about 18 months ago. But we know that open source doesn't really go away. It's been very, very successful over a number of years. But I'd encourage you to look at some of this stuff if you're thinking about cloud and you don't have a cloud strategy because from Meg Whitman down in HP, they are into cloud, they are going to deploy cloud, and they have some very exciting technology which will redefine the way that we think about cloud over the coming years. Mr. Chalmers, I'd like you just to, I think you've got about three minutes to talk about this. Three minutes to tell you all the future. Yes. <laughs> trying to give you a glimpse of how core technology will change. We're all used to change. You'll, you'll think you know how that is. But over the next four years, the way IT industry works and all the core technologies we use will fundamentally be turned on its head. And some of these are the, the key ones. So we'll change the way that we do how we store data. We talked a little bit earlier this morning about the quantities we're trying to catch. You can't do that with the way we used to do it. We have to do it differently. So we'll move from a, an organ, a structure where you have lots of different places where you keep data. And if your organization is of any scale, you'll have people who worry about where that stuff is. And over that time, we will move to flat universal memory. So this is the ability to have petabytes of storage in something about that big that has state. So when the power gets turned off, it's still there. Right? This will radically change the amount of data you can hold. So the problem is actually not going to be, can I capture all of this stuff? The issue is going to be the ability to mine it. You will be able to capture it and store it and transmit it because we'll do it very differently. The processors we use will be very different. Ian talked a little bit about Moonshot and the way that we're moving away from standard processor technologies, which is kind of what we've done for 20 years, to a very different architecture where you'll have very much more choices to make around how you define and build your own individual architectures. This will give you far more power, far more flexibility, but also far more choice to make. We will also move away from copper. That's a photograph of a real data center. It's not one of ours over a beer. I'll tell you whose it is. Um, but fundamentally, we have to move away from electricity. Electricity is hot, slow, and expensive. We have to move to light, which is colder, faster, and ultimately cheaper. So you'll see the entire industry moving to photonics. Well, we've done fiber for a long time to shrink distance, but this is about speed inside the process. That sort of technology, that combination of those three things will radically change what a physical IT looks like, both in the large scale inside a data center, but also all the way down to the device. Imagine if I can build something that's about the size of your phone that allows us to be able to capture uh, something in the order of a petabyte of data and can go in my pocket. I'll tell you what, if I can ever get into your data center, I'll take two copies of everything you ever had and walk out of it just because I can. So you think you have a security challenge with USB sticks? Think about that, but go up a thousand times. That's the sort of challenge you'll have to wrestle with in your organization. We'll also see the software world radically change. We're moving away from the world of large-scale, proprietary, dominant vendors, the Oracles, the Microsofts, the VMwares of this world. Uh, and this was really flipped in Europe last year when Mr. Snowden and the NSA, sorry, the alleged NSA scandals happened to us, um, where I saw nearly every major organization go from a mindset that said, open source is interesting, but it's the happy end of the industry. I don't really care because I can't really trust it. To it's far more trustworthy because I can actually see inside it and I can trust because I can see the source code. Your organization will move to a model which will have dramatically more open source technology. Tying it together is absolutely the framework that you'll need to build. We'll also see uh, the devices that we carry will become far more 
uh, very to be talked about slightly further out wearable stuff um, but actually the devices that you carry become almost incidental it's the data on the device that starts to become the critical thing and if you don't have a policy today in your organization for managing data on the device whether it's yours or the, the individuals you need one and you need one now because legally if you don't have one you are exposed if you have corporate data on somebody else's device, the chief exec's iPad, who owns the data? It's not clear. Some countries it is very clear. Germany, for example, the owner of the device owns the data. So if you look at download corporate data onto somebody's personal iPad, it's theirs, not yours. UK, it's a bit more blurred. Some countries are getting around this with, with uh, statements of, of intent, making people sign documents. If you haven't got a policy, you need one. I encourage you all to think about that. But if you put all these things together, what I would argue is there is no standstill option. We've got to move forward. Uh, we've got to move forward and the cloud will radically change. We'll see far more of this technology deployed to give you more choices. Now, ultimately, that's a really good thing, but it probably, and I hope my aim this morning, was to make you feel a little uncomfortable. Not because there aren't any answers out there. There are way too many answers. Right? Finding your way through this is what you, you need to do over the next year or two we as an industry will provide you with far more technology and far more options. Choosing the right ones to keep your organization ahead in its marketplace becomes critical to your success. And it's very clear, this is a very old quote from one of HP's founders that was made many years ago. It's probably more true today than it's ever been. There is no standstill option. If you are not actively planning to go forward and improve and develop and take advantage of some of the changes that we'll put on the table for you, you are falling behind whether you're falling behind to a new entrant or you're falling behind to a, a competitor who moves faster, you've got to take advantage of this. There is no time to sit back and consider it for two years while you work out what the policy is. You've got to be able to move faster, take advantage of the technology so you stay ahead of the marketplace. As I said at the very beginning, we are privileged or challenged, depending on your perspective, to be working in a culture and an industry which is going to change so much in the next few years that is probably the most exciting time. We call our development the machine because that sums up the collection of projects that we're leading to develop some and deliver some of that technology. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I'll be around until lunchtime. Very happy to talk to any of you if you have any questions. Thanks very much.